Welcome back. Um, it's a good thing I stopped and checked. Uh, I was wrong in all parts. The um, It says so right here. Fall under destroyed marker as appropriate. You do not earn experience or victory points. So then I started to get frustrated because I would swear I read somewhere that you get victory points for this. And it's not for pre-existing damage. The area that you get the victory points for is the flak damage. So when you're in the blast and flak part of the game, uh, you get victory points for that. And so it's the same check. Uh, so here we go. So in the flak result, uh, you damage bombers. If a flak pack results in a destroyed or fallen, da da da, you earn a victory point for it, but EP is not earned. So the staff doesn't earn experience, but it earns victory. So that was what I was quoting for you guys, but that's for whenever there's flak. And this only occurs when you're over the target. We're on an outbound mission, we're not over the target, so we won't even see this. So we use the exact same charts in the situation manual. So those little charts there are used for flak and they're used for the pre-existing damage, but the rules are different. Um, so in the flak, you get the victory points, but when you have pre-existing damage, you don't. So those bombers being destroyed don't do anything for us. So, um, well, they don't do anything for us other than they give us lower numbers here. So, and they count as a marker towards cohesion checks, but uh, we don't get to claim them. So I'm going to put this in my notes here that uh, one destroy... One fallen, no VP. So we don't, at the end of the scenario, count them towards victory points. Okay, we're ready to get going. Uh, we are on the move step. And obviously our BF-110s need to drop some bombs. We're going to try this again. The one thing that was unfortunate, very, very unfortunate, is we only have one tactical point. I like to come in low spend the tactical point to jump to high, and then um, you saw I had a really nice coordinated attack. Um, this time around, I'm not going to be able to do that. That is, um, I need that tactical point just to avoid other problems. And there's one guy here, I think it's Grim, who I need to spend tactical points or otherwise he exits. Um, so we're just going to have to take longer. The other part of it is, is I'm not sure I'm in a rush to drop my bombs, largely because these guys get hit very easily, as we learned. So when they start doing regular attacks, uh, they, they become shredded like butter. So um, we're going to come in low with them. Uh, that part's not an issue. And then we have no sun. So I like using the sun, as you may know. So it bothers me when there's no sun to help us. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six guys. So I want to do a nose and a flank, I'm sorry, a nose and a tail attack. I want to do maximum damage. So I'm going to put three low uh, on the tail and hmm. I do benefit if they come from different altitudes, but I don't know if I want to waste a round. Yeah, I'm not going to waste a round. So I'm going to do three from the tail. thinking. I apologize. I want to go low on that side, but they're anchored. I can't. And the reason I want to do that is because I already have a destroyed one and I want to pick on this guy. And see, there's only, there's really low numbers come if you come from that side. If I come from this side, I guess I still have low numbers. Um, this one, however, is a three. You know what, I'll put one guy low. Is that really what I want to do? Yeah, 
I will do that. The other thing I could do is I could just attack here because the tail here is not bad. There's, although that tail's bad. Um, man, I wish I had this down to a science. I apologize. Um, I'm going to do one here and two there. Let's mix it up. Okay, you really want to mix it up if there were escorts. Okay, spent way too much time on that. Return, escort, recovery, blast and flak, cohesion check. There is one. Uh, that element up there has two markers. So unless I roll one, nothing happens. So nothing happens. And we would go to turn two. Okay, now we move. Our BF-110s are climbing, so we'll go level with them. And I'm deciding that on the last turn, I wanted to get Swarm. So I'm going to take this nose guy and put him there. I know I'm, 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 re, I'm going back and, and reneging on my turn, but that's a... Uh, should be no pot, no outcome there. I'm just realizing I need four in the same approach box because that's the requirement for a swarm. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put four in the same approach box there. And, um, and then we're gonna have this guy come in low from the oblique and this guy come in low from the nose. Okay, so we keep going. We do a cohesion check. No one, so nothing happens there. So now we gotta do our attack. And the attack, I still rely on this checklist a lot. We do our formation. So I gotta figure out what element I really wanna go after in order to get this swarm. I, I do like that one back there. Here's my challenge. I have four from this approach box. That means I'm going to have a collision check here and a collision check there. So I'm going to have two collision checks in order to get this swarm. And I, I'm telling you, I don't like it. I mean, if I do this one here, I can, I only have to do one collision check because only one of these needs to have two. Um, that's the problem. I'm just having so much analysis paralysis over this and I have so much fear over this this whoever designed this game I think his name's Jerry you have created fear in me um okay well we only live once and like I said I like to be risky besides this guy I have to pay a TP to keep him so he's gonna be one of them I'm gonna put him on top so the collision check will be with him. <laughs> All right, we'll put two there. And then we have two there, although I like both of those guys. I really, really do. Um, if I thought about this differently, nope, it is what it is. We're gonna leave it be. Okay, and then this one's coming in oblique and we're going to do there. Now it says plus one anchored flank. That's only if the anchor is on this side. Even though there's anchors on the flank, they boost that side. So um, we don't want to be coming in from that direction. And then this is coming in from the nose. So what's the safest nose spot? That one is a three and that one is a three. Oh, this is not a good you know what? I don't have to go after them with him. I'm going to go after a different element. And right here. This one is just a one. We'll go after that bomber all by ourselves. Everybody's low. Low altitude. So we got that. There's no out of the sun. We pick our mode. Um... thinking. Heller will be evasive. Everybody else has to be determined.
and then I'm gonna make this guy evasive since he's all by himself. All right, now unfortunately though, evasive helps collision checks more than anything, and we have two. Can I really survive two collision checks? Jeff, how dumb are you being? You just did a strategy where you just learned all these lessons from last night, and here you are. Yeah, I'm doing it again. I, Mama always told me I'll never learn. All right, so the first one will be on Grim. The second one will be on Kremler. There. Okay, here's the first one. On Grim. Oh, awful, 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 awful. I don't even have two TP. So these two are out of the mission. They're not even in the mission anymore. Next one is a hit. Okay, and then Kremler has no ability to avoid the hit. So we turn it over and it's an eight. Um, I do confess that that's a pretty easy one. As long as I get less than an eight, I'm gonna be fine. Well, hold on. Man, I always get these backwards. So if I'm taking damage, it's right here. Roll equal to or higher to avoid. Oh no. Eight is awful. This is an awful one. Yeah. Who, who wrote me and convinced me to do this? What a stupid idea. So here's what's happening. There's no swarm because I don't have four guys anymore. I do get this. Um... That was not worth it. It just truly wasn't. Uh, okay. We learn. We live and learn. Uh, this marker stays. That marker does not. And, um, and when I mean stay, I mean it counts towards the cohesion. Okay. Uh, off we go. We have... This guy is a two... Coming in from the oblique at low altitude. Oh, let me see. Select maneuvers. Oh, yeah, maneuvers. Um, this one's rolling to the right and climbing. So he's going to go high nose. Um, those two are going to... I'm sorry, high tail. This one's going high tail. And then this one, these two are gonna dive towards the nose. And then this guy is going to dive um, towards the tail, straight back. Okay, we're gonna do oblique, Mr. Oblique here. We have a two, he is low. He's evasive. So here's an interesting thing. The no ammo is bad. Um, but he would have done damage. But instead, we did no damage at all. And then he would move one, but there's nowhere to go. So he just stays right where he's at. Well, actually, he moves here because he's rolling in that direction towards the tail. And that's it for his attack. So now we have two attacks from the tail. Both of them are low and a two. So we have a two low and it's direct. So Kemmler there takes a hit. Um, you know what, he has an eight on him. I'm pretty sure he's going to the box. So we're gonna just take the hit. And that's gonna guarantee he goes to the box. Oh my goodness, and now he's got a nine on top of it. He can only go to the box once, so we'll let him absorb it. And 
that's it for him. And then the one below him is a two, determined, so he takes a hit. So I did the right thing, because now I can cancel that hit. So, um, that was very fun. Sarcasm inserted. Okay, so uh, the tail goes back. And now we go to our nose guy here. This is Bauer. Uh, he's attacking with a one uh, from low. He's evasive. Oh, look at that. If he would have been determined, he would have actually hit. Uh, but instead, he gets hit. And that stinks. So Bauer, fortunately, is one of our experts. So he's going to use mission two, his luck ability, and avoid getting hit. And he moves one into the kill zone. So I don't know if he's going to survive this. Okay. Now we draw continuing fire. I have four cards. We'll start with Bauer. He's diving, so we ignore the event. He is in a zone that was a four, but it became a three because of that. And since he's evasive, he didn't take any hits. So very lucky, very, very lucky. Okay, so he dives, evasive, return to there. Now we'll do our uh, rolling, our climb roller back there. We skip the event. Uh, his is a two, and he was evasive, so no hit for him. And since he was evasive, he goes into evasive return. Flip that back over. And then we have these two. These guys were not evasive. They're in a two threat level zone. We'll start with the first one. Uh, there's no escorts, so we ignore the event, and he takes no more hits. Oh, come on, he already had two. He can handle another one. Let's throw all the way down there. And then the last one, uh, we are, what are we doing? Yeah, we're diving. So let's see, there's the dive marker. If diving, change to evasive mode. So we will do that, and that allows him to avoid the hit. So that worked out to our advantage. Um, the only unfortunate part is it's going to just take him longer to recover. So that puts us to the end of that turn. Move on to turn three. Um, okay, so now we got a move action, and we're going to move up to high. Bombers are getting in place. And then we do return, 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 and that's it. Now we do recovery. So we got this guy who has to do miracle rolls. Uh, the first one is an eight, and the second one is a nine. Oh, well, he failed the first one. So this is a rudder. So he's going to the rudder box. And the rudder box is there. Kremler, we love you. Do not come home. You have three girlfriends waiting for you. Okay, um, we have a cohesion check. I rolled a four. That's not low enough. So this goes away. And that's it. We did no damage to these bombers. Well, that's how it goes. Okay, now we go to turn four. The escorts are almost arriving. We come in low for Freeling. Bowers coming in low. These bombers are going up to bomb. And they come in high. So here's, hmm. I'm thinking I want to hold the bombers back. I don't want to drop the bombs this turn. I want to drop the bombs the same turn that we're attacking. 
Do I want to do that? Yes, I do. So I'm going to hold these guys back one more turn. And uh, the whole purpose of them is to drop these bombs. I'm not as worried about getting them into the fight. Um, so we will do that. Now we go to turn. Oh, we have to do a cohesion check. Oh, it failed. I wrote, that is a one, not a seven. Okay, so cohesion check failed. This element is loose. So there's a minus one all across the board. That is good. I'm gonna come over to here. Now the escorts arrive. Roll down. Roll to six. Two forward, three below trailing. So two forward. Three below trailing. And then we go to... Now, here's an interesting choice. I can do low approaches or I can go up the level, which the designer said does more damage. But I want to bomb this turn. So we're going to attack now. So he's going to come in lows no. Lows no. Nose low. Is that really what we want to do? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Tail low, tail high, four bombers. Okay. <clears throat> Off we go. No return, escort. So we're going to roll red for the forward, black for the below. I rolled an eight and an eight. So the eight means this one's going to below trailing. So I like putting him at the bottom. And the eight on this goes to above trailing, which is always a problem. Okay, so going back to this, uh, we have blast and flak. So let's get out our blast and flak chart, which is this handy guy. And step one, aim. Select an element to aim for. Place a target marker. So we're gonna get four target markers. That's these guys. And we're gonna target where do we want to hit. So the fact that there's a destroyed and a fallen does make those nice targets, but I'm going after this one here, this element. And I learned my lesson last time. We're going all four. We're hitting this one hard. Because if I'm lucky, only one of these four is actually going to detonate. So, um, do step 1A, then if dropping bombs go to 1B. So, if we remember, we have our 60% chance of succeeding. So, um, there are four targets. They're all BF 110s. So, I need to roll a 6 or better. Or I'm sorry, a 5 or better in order to... Um, in order for these targets to stay. Otherwise, they get removed from the board. So I'm just gonna roll two at a time. So one of them's gone, one of them stays. And we're gonna roll two more. Ooh, they both stay. So we get three of them that survived. We already are doing better than last mission. So now we go here, and this is where we roll a red and a black. And whichever one's higher determines the location that it detonates. And then even if it detonates, there's still a chance of no damage. So once again, these are very, very uh, low probability situations. But we're going to just go one at a time. There's three of them. I'll just put them in a stack. The location doesn't matter. Let's start with the first one. I rolled a five and a two. So if I come down here, the five is way the bloody over there. That's, a, that's bad. That's very bad. So we don't have a trailing plane. Uh, but if I go from the center, I go back one and over. So here, this would go back one and then over. And it leaves the element. And per the rules, this leaves the game. Bollocks. Now I go to the next one. A 10 and a 3. Okay, so the red 10 is right there. So that means this will go in front of the leading bomber. 
which is a good spot. What do I do with the lower number? Oh, the lower number is this. So no damage. That is crap. Um, okay, that is no damage, but the only good thing that comes out of it is you do flip it over. It detonates, it just didn't damage the bomber, but it will count towards cohesion. It's a very minor benefit, but let's go with the last one. Eight and five. So a black eight is right there in the corner. So we would put this there. It does detonate, and then the five is good. It does one damage. So for the first time, we're actually damaging something here. And for two missions in a row, we've shown how these bombs are not very effective. But we did cause a lot of detonations. Uh, so we did some damage. It's a 10, I rolled a nine, unfortunate. So two damage to that bomber right there, and that's it for Blast and Flag. Now we do a cohesion check. So up there we have three markers. Uh, I have to get lower, so a three was not good enough. Here we have one, two, three, four markers. Uh, six. So that means this was all for nothing. Okay. So maybe bombs are not the most valuable thing. We spend, what, three operational points to be able to use them? And then whenever those planes get damaged, we lose operational points in the future. So, so it costs me a lot more than just three. Uh, I'm thinking math-wise, this isn't working out in my favor. But uh, uh, anyways, that's the point of the campaign, so you get to see how this goes. Um, all right, so now I have three planes attacking. There's no chance for swarm. There's a small chance of collision. I'm sorry. Uh, there's no chance for rot as well, because they also have to be from the same approach box. All three are from different approach boxes. So um, the only one we have is position. If you're attacked from more than one direction and more than one altitude. So we got nose and tail. Um, so the only place where nose and tail is really helpful is back here. And, and the reason is, is there's a minus two to this spot. So this guy could come in low there. And that's only a one for him. This one's coming in high from the tail. So we can go here. And this one's coming in low from the tail, and he can go there. And because there was multiple... Now, when you do the multiple altitude check for, for this, it's the element. It doesn't say that they have to attack the same bomber. So we do get this bonus. Um, I am skipping a few steps before I determine that, but... So we select their mode. Um, are we going to be determined or not? I'm going to go yes for determined. Or should I? Yeah, why not? We're going to go determined. There's no collision checks. Uh, the maneuvers are gonna be simple. Uh, this one is climbing to the tail. Uh, this one is climbing to the nose. And this one is diving to the nose. And that's how we're gonna roll. All right, so we'll do the nose attack first. It's a one. So nose, one, determined. Uh, he's coming in low. So he does a hit and 
he takes a hit and he progresses one. So let's do the progress one to there. Um, he will take a hit, which we will use. Well, who is he first? He's Freeling. I think I have. Yeah, I have luck ability for Freeling. I will use that and save the hit for someone else. And he did a damage, which was really good. So let's check. Oh, there's even a chance we might roll well. Nope. So this six becomes zero damage to the bomber. It's unfortunate. Sorry for the focus issues there. Okay, now we have um, that guy is coming, Bauer. It's coming from the tail, and his is a two low. So two low from the tail, determined is a hit, and a, uh, so he hits them, they hit him. I think Bauer already used his ability. Yes, he did. So we will use this marker. So that was a good call to save the marker. And then we do a damage to the same bomber. And the damage we get is a wing. We don't get to roll. Ooh, one. We're not really, the armor is holding strong for those Americans. That was damn Yankees. Okay, and then we got one more. That's also a two. Coming from the tail, but it's high, not low. So two from the tail, high is just a hit and nothing else. So that was not very helpful. Who are you? You are Heller. And unfortunately for Heller, Heller is not an expert. So Heller takes the damage and it is very bad. Not good. Not a good day for Heller. Okay, so now we do continuing fire. One, two, three. This campaign is hard. Um, oh, we'll do Heller first. Uh, Heller is... What are you doing, Heller? You're diving, right? Yes. Heller is diving. He's bounced. Escort marker is in a below trailing station. It attacks this fighter. If not exiting or dogfighting, fighter breaks away to tell evasive and escort. Okay, so there is an escort in below trailing, so this escort will attack him. And there are four of them. Uh, since he comes from below trailing, the text on below trailing states that he is always lower altitude. So that's, I guess, one thing we have going for us. And I'm just Bear with me, I'm opening up the sheet. Okay, we're a BF-109, we have altitude, but we don't have more fighters, so we use this bottom check here, because we're up against the P-47. This is the same check as a Spitfire. And I rolled absolutely awful. I rolled a two, I'm probably destroyed. That D does not look good. The D is dogfight. Fighters in one escort marker dogfight. Well, he's not destroyed. I give him that. So what happens is Heller keeps his damage marker. And while he's damaged, he's in the middle of a dogfight. So we go to the dogfight box. And then this escort goes to the dogfight box with him. Um, what does dogfight mean? It's, it's pretty simple. It's written on the board, but basically it just means they're delayed a round. And next round, during the escort phase, they will do another aerial combat. But this time, they will be level with each other. So I'll be rolling on an even worse chart. Um, you know, the good news is he wasn't destroyed, so I'm happy with that. Um, even if he survives this, that that damage marker that's on him is still going to be have to be resolved. So Heller has a very difficult future in front of him. So we go to these other two guys and we don't even resolve this anymore because there's nothing to resolve, although it would have been no damage. Okay, next we're gonna do the one on the left. 
And those are in a, it's a two box. They're both climbing. So if climbing or climb rolling, draw another card and apply hits from both cards. Okay, so um, they're direct. So he took one hit from this card and another hit from that card. Yay. So he's taking two hits and they're not good. So Bauer is in trouble. Uh, this mission is not going well. And then I need to go grab another continuing fire card for the last guy. Uh, he's not a green pilot, he's direct, so he takes no damage. Okay, so this guy does return and so does this one. Both climbing, so they go into the high return box, and that's the end of the turn. So we're now on turn six. We're in the move step. There are four, those four BF 110s need to move, they're not allowed to stay there. And I'm gonna go high oblique over here with four of them, like so. Okay. Um, next, we do return. So there is one plane returning. Uh, this one and is not. So now we go to escort. So we'll start here. I rolled a seven. This at a seven is box with the most fighters. So all the BF 110s are now encountering and they've just been, they're going into an aerial combat. This one, I rolled a six. Uh, this one goes to the nose level. And then this one, I'm rolling a seven. He goes to flank two, four o'clock. Um, okay, so even though the anchor marker is there, uh, he still gets to go. So he'll go on top of flank. The anchor doesn't bother him. Okay, and then we have this aerial combat to resolve. So it's a no and a no. So we're on this bottom box. So that two would mean he's destroyed. Whereas in the other case, he wouldn't have been. That was the difference between him having the altitude advantage. So no more rolling twos, please. Okay, much better. He rolled a seven, which means I think that's an exit. Yeah, they're breaking off. They both exit. So this guy exits and so does the P-47. It leaves the map. Before you exit, you have to resolve this. So we need a seven or higher. I rolled a one, that's not gonna work. A fuselage, so a heller goes to the box. Okay, next we have to resolve that combat over there. So we have four BF-110s and there are four P-47s. So unfortunately, that doesn't mean we have the advantage. Um, and since he came from the high trailing box, he has altitude. So it's a no and no, but it's for the BF-110. So we're going to use this chart down here. And this is bad, 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 bad. We have to roll really high. Roll to five. Yeah. So they break off and fighters and one escort marker exit. And then the X means one fighter is destroyed. Check for bailout. We don't need to do bailout. So a BF-110 is destroyed. The other three exit the map. And because one of them is destroyed, we now have a minus one. Let's, let's do it this way. OP lost. We have one OP lost. Oh, and we lose an experience point. So we're down to two. We gained absolutely none.
this campaign or this mission and we're just losing <laughs> um okay um and our fun isn't over because now we're on the recovery phase and guess what bauer now gets to fight for his life let's do the easier one first roll to five i did survive that now let's do the harder one that is an eight. Oh my gosh, Bauer, you have horseshoes growing out of your butt. Okay, Bauer survives. He is in the return box. He does not move, but he is living for another day. And then this escort was fighting the BF-110s, so he's out of the mission. Now, if you'll notice the escorts, there are four of them out of the mission. Um, one of them is there, one is there, and there's only one in the box over here. So. We actually have low threats from the escorts, but we also only have two fighters left in the in the match. And I was hoping to capitalize on the fact that we had a destroyed guy here and a fallen one there, and then the bombs were going to go here. Now I just have a bunch of random markers, and it's not good. So with that being said, we're going to get to the next level, which is cohesion check. We'll start here. There are two markers, only a one matters, okay? And then here we have one, two, three, four, five markers. This is a better roll, and it worked. The element is now kaput, so they get a minus two. Okay, uh, mission turn goes to seven. All right, my fighters, there's only two of them. I'm going to move to level going to maximize my chances of hitting. Um, I just realized something. I wanted to keep these tokens off my guys because I wanted to not have to deal with the tokens. But when I did damage, I was supposed to draw two and keep one. And I didn't do that. So some of you are probably screaming into my video, hey, you're supposed to draw two and keep one. I'm realizing it now, and I guess we're just going to have to assume that I draw, drew two and kept those ones. Um, that actually may have made a big difference, but considering the fact that I was doing this swarm rule wrong for a large portion of the first season, let's call this a little bit of karma. So I hurt myself by not remembering this part of the rule. So I'm going to do that so I don't forget. And then on the return step, he's moving in to high. Okay. Uh, we get to escort. These two have nobody to attack, so they're going to return to below trailing. And then we're going to roll for the one that was in below trailing. He rolled a nine, which means it goes to above trailing, and that's not good. Okay. We move to turn eight. Uh, let's attack. Tail level, tail high. And we can do this now, like so. Uh, oh, I skipped. After escort was done, we were supposed to do cohesion. Let's do this one first. Nothing. This one has a five. Ah, roll a six. Okay, <clears throat> now we do that. And now we do escorts. So we're going to do the below one first. I roll a six. He goes to flank level, which is here. And then this one, as long as we don't roll high, roll a six. Oh, come on. It's the box with the most fighters. So we have two fighters. The game rules say we get to choose. Um, I'm gonna choose the guy who is not level, Bauer, the one with the horseshoes. So they do aerial combat. It's a no, and I guarantee you this is a no. Yeah, look, there's six of them. No, no, I'm gonna roll on this chart. Look at that, I rolled a nine. So nine, so even with a nine, we don't damage anybody. Um, the E means we would have killed one of them. So I would have needed a perfect 10. But a 9, I will take. 
because it just means Bauer comes home. So Mr. Lucky gets to come home and another escort is out of the mission. So now we're down to just one. Let's do cohesion check. And for that one up there, I rolled a five. I have to get less than one, two, three, four. So that still didn't happen. If I fail a cohesion check one more time, one of these planes destroys or becomes fallen. So we actually get victory points for that. So <laughs> the fact that we're failing these cohesion checks is really painful. Um, okay, so now we're going in for the kill and I'm going to, since this one has two markers on him already and only one more damage, we're gonna go for this guy back here because uh, I want to maximize the cohesion thing. If I somehow get a miracle kill here, then he'll still have two markers on him. So, um, look at me thinking so optimistically when these cards are never helpful. <clears throat> I have to decide if I'm going to be evasive or determined. So here's the deal. We are on turn eight. If I come back evasive, on turn nine, I will just return. So if I come back evasive, I will return here on turn nine, and then on turn 10, I'll move to here, and then the mission ends. So if I wanna get one more attack in, I have to go determined. Uh, here's where it gets strange. The cohesion check could get me points, but I have to stay alive long enough for the cohesion check to work in my favor. So if I go determined, guns a blazing, and it, I get injured, then once I go to this injured box over here, the mission ends. And that cohesion check doesn't happen. I mean, I think you finish out the turn, but, um, so I don't know. I mean, I mean, I know there's this pressure of, I need to do everything with just this one fighter, but there's a part of me that's thinking, no, I don't. So I'm gonna go evasive. Uh, so I'm going to flip him over, and we are going to climb high, straight through, and let's see how this turns out. Um, so that's a two from the tail, level, two, level, evasive, <laughs> he takes a hit, look at that. It didn't matter what I chose. If I would have gone determined, I would have taken two hits. That's awful. He would have done a hit any other way. All right, who is this? Freeling, I think Freeling already used his ability. Yes, he did. Freeling takes a hit. There's nothing I can do about it. And it's a bad one, dang it. All right, well, the mission's gonna end miserably. We're gonna get zero victory points and negative operational points, and we actually lost experience. Okay, debris. Well, something good could come of this if we roll even. Let's roll even. And we did. Okay, even. Place a damage marker on the nearest bomber if odd the fighter is hit. And we are evasive. So the threat level of two means we took no hit. So here's the damage marker. Ooh, ooh, we have a chance. We have a chance. Roll big, roll big. And we did it. Okay, a bomber is fallen. And it can't get up. That commercial goes through my head every time. Jerry, you're a mean guy. Okay, uh, so good things happen here. The first thing is Freeling gets an experience point. I know it's an event related to debris, but since it happened on his turn, and since Jerry makes me draw continuing fire even when all the bombers are destroyed, um, I'm going to say that my fighter had something to do with it. So uh, that will count as an experience point for him. He's now up to four. He needs one more uh, to get another skill. We get our experience point back, so we're at three. 
and then we earn one precious victory point for that. Okay, so this card goes away. He does return to the return box evasive. And we go to turn nine. So in turn nine, there is no move, there is no return. The escort phase, um, there is only one escort left. I rolled a six. He goes to flank at 10 o'clock, which is there. And we do recovery, which is here. All right, so I need another miracle roll. I rolled a six, which is not enough. So he has wing damage. So Freeling goes to the wing box. He's just getting ready to get another uh, skill and he better survive this. Okay, um, we do finish out the turn. There is a cohesion check. So this one doesn't matter as much, but this one up here is very interesting. One, two, three, four, still five markers. But if this kaput flips one more time, which is what would happen if I roll less than a five, this plane falls and I get another victory point. Oh. Why don't you come when we need you? All right, victory point denied by the game. So that falls out. Um, we get one and one only victory point from the entire mission. Everything else comes off. I'm wishing we were still on formation map one. Life was so much simpler. These escorts are a pain in the butt, and we have to resolve this. Okay, uh, we'll start with Kremler first. Need a big buck, big buck, no wings. Ooh, nine is good, nine is good. BF 109, he lands. Good job, Kremler. And he gets an experience point. He is now an expert. Yay! So I'm going to cross all those out. And you know me. I'm giving him luck. Good job, Kremler. He is an expert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Freeling. Come on, big rolls, big rolls. Oh, three. Freeling, you stink. He is on fire. So now we got to do a bailout check. No! 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 Freeling dies. With four experience points, ready to get leveled up, he is no more. And we lose yet another expert. I mean, we just gained one, but now we lost one. Freeling is out. No. Our new guy needs to have an F name. And all the F words I'm thinking of right now are not going to be kosher for this video. <sighs> Frank. Frank, you stink. Okay. And over here is our little tokens. I'm gonna grab this one. It is panic. Frank likes to panic. He has P, which is as soon as he takes a hit, he has to perform recovery immediately. Last but not least is Heller. Oh, good job, Heller. A 10 is almost a guaranteed land, and it is a guaranteed land. Uh, good job, Heller. So Heller, oh, here we go. Heller gets five experience points. So we just got another expert. 
Okay, so I'm thinking that with these tougher formations, uh, going for swarm is not necessarily a good idea. Um, and, and maybe just coming in and just using evasive mode in the beginning, and you're like a little annoying gnat, right? You just see the, the person sitting in their lawn chair swatting at this gnat that it just never seems to hit, but the gnat always lands on their nose, lands on their ears, and you just keep swatting and swatting until one of these falls out, and then another one falls out. And, and maybe that's the right way to approach this game, uh, and I don't know. I mean, there's not a lot of turns sometimes on these missions, but I just cannot crack this. And this is, uh, this was a bad outing. Anyways, 55 minutes in. Thank you for watching. We survived mission two. We now have a grand total of seven experience points, or victory points, out of... We need 15 to win. We need 20. <laughs> um, we need 10 to not lose. So uh, we'll see you soon.